This is the award-winning Lee Pitts Live. Brought to you by Lee Health. Southwest Florida, welcome to another edition of Lee Pitts Live. Where are we? We are at McGregor Clinic. McGregor Clinic, of course, is the preeminent center for HIV care and education in Southwest Florida. We, Lee Pitts Live, that is, have been partnering with McGregor Clinic for many years to get the message out about HIV and AIDS, and they have done an outstanding job. We have a fabulous set of guests who are coming up today. Get a chance to talk to our good friends from Mount Olive AME Church. Got Pastor Givens here, and we'll get a chance to talk to the vice chairman of the board of trustees, the eminent Professor Lovey Wells. Second part of our show, we'll see what the Zeta Phi Beta sorority is up to. Got a holiday event that's coming up to die for. We'll get a chance to talk to a woman of Zeta Phi Beta, my sister, Jackie Matthews Williams. All this happening on Leap is Live. Keep it locked. We'll be right back. Southwest Florida, welcome to another edition of Leap is Live. I am so thrilled here at McGregor Clinic to bring in some prominent leaders in the community. And uh, I, was, I was joking with the pastor earlier on. I said, you're looking like Dr. King over there. He's such a distinguished gentleman and a great leader in the community. So we're thrilled to have Pastor James Givens, the senior pastor of Mount Olive AME Church, and Lovey Wells, a longtime friend of mine, who's the vice chairman of the Board of Trustees. That's kind of fancy, Lovey. Board of Trustees, man. That's what happened when you retire. <laughs> <laughs> Let's start off with you, Lovey, before we get too formal. What is a Board of Trustees in the church setting? In the church setting, mm -hmm. uh, the Board of Trustees are responsible for handling the temporal matters of the church. In other words, anything the church is involved in with respect to the non-religious community, we are responsible for taking care of those kinds of things. The buildings, the grounds, uh, making sure that uh, all of the uh, contracts that the church enters into are uh, overseen and that uh, the church's properties, if you will, are taken care of. Great job. That's a lot of responsibility. Pastor Givens, the Mount Olive Church, which is a staple in Fort Myers, particularly in the Dunbar community, it's been there over 100 years. 122 this December. When I first heard that, I was like, Lord. Now, when you're standing there in that pulpit, now, that physical location that we see right there, what's that street? Orange Street. Orange Street. That, you, you move, you've moved several times in 100 years, or has that been the location? Oh, uh, that's the third location. Okay. Mm -hmm. In 1929, they moved in that present location. That's got to be interesting, too, to just to say that, like 1929. Because yes. we know what was going on, how America was in 1929. Right. And uh, the African American, the African Methodist Episcopal Church was the first black church right. uh, in the history of America. Right. And that was a big deal at the time, right? That's correct. Go ahead, elaborate a little bit. Well, we are proud of our heritage. Uh, as you stated, the AME Church has been around the longest. And uh, we have gone through a great stride. We have made great, great, great miles uh, along the way. We have lost some of our heritage by uh, not teaching it, in my opinion. But I, see. but I believe that we are still one of the greatest church, if not the greatest church, in terms of our history and how we have struggled. And this is what we're all about, liberating, helping our people to come to the next level and livelihood and making certain that all that we do, we give God the glory. Excellent. Now, the, uh, just so people won't know I'm that smart, I was watching a documentary, mm -hmm. and it was, it was dealing with the history of America, the documentary, and as a part of that documentary, the America, the Story of Us, which was a great documentary on the History Channel. It dealt with that specific part of that, the, the, how the church started and all that. I said, this is fascinating. And in my head, I was saying, we got an AME church right here. Wow, what great history. Right. And so I'm, I'm able to bring that out indirectly right here right. so the public will understand. Now, uh, you guys, you guys, meaning the church, is embarking on a, something that's going to be very great for the community. You're going to be building a new Mount Olive AME church. That was, the name will continue, Lovey? Yes. Tell us about the pro what, where are we, what stage are we in now? At this stage, we have uh, received our uh, permit for the development. We're beginning to do site development on a uh, piece of property that the church purchased 
uh, recently off of uh, Martin Luther King Jr. Boulevard between uh, Veronica Shoemaker and Highlands Avenue. We have about 12 acres there, which we intend to place the new sanctuary on. Uh, one of the things that's really, really exciting, uh, Pastor Given, is the fact that now Mount Olive is going to morph into a worship center that is going to be a tremendous asset for the community, not just for the church. There are going to be all types of activities there that uh, is vital for the Dunbar community to take part in. And I'm so proud that a church like yours of such uh, respect is bringing this on board. Sort of describe what uh, we're going to have at the worship center. Hear me saying we. You like That's that, right? Because it's That's for the correct. community. That's what it's for. It's for mm -hmm. the community. At the uh, Mount Olive Church, uh, the worship center, we will have a book store. We will have a theater room. Mm -hmm. We will have a basketball court. We will also have a weight room that the young folk and adults will be able to do so and other community uh, affairs that and events, we will be able to house uh, 850 uh, folk in just the sanctuary, but mm. about 15 classrooms. So there'll be, a, a, and the, like um, weddings, things of that nature, we'll be able to also uh, house and host in the Dunbar community. Uh, no longer will we have to go to other areas and outside of our community, the church will be available for all who desire to come into the walls of Mount Island. And that location is perfect right there at, uh, on Veronica Shoemaker That's and M.L. M. M. King. Yeah. And you didn't, when you were considering the whole process, and this is to you, Lovey, of building a church, was that very passionate, were you very passionate about making sure you stay right there in the community where we're used to seeing Mount Olive? Most definitely, because uh, Mount Olive obviously is a historical church in the Dunbar community. And we have a number of uh, members of our church who are tied to the Dunbar community. We could not see ourselves leaving the Dunbar community. One thing about the site, too, is that it is somewhat of a gateway into the Dunbar community when you consider I-75 and the fact that you have to take uh, Martin Luther King down into central Fort Myers. Mm -hmm. Let's shout out, Pastor Given. Let's shout out uh, LaVon Sims. I know he wasn't able to be here today, but we'll get him in the future. He's been a part of this uh, building committee from That's scratch, correct. right? That's correct. He's the chairman of the building ministry, and he has done a wonderful job. And the three of us really work together well, along with the, the board and the community as well. So we're looking forward to greater things and his leadership and praying that he will be aboard uh, real soon here on the Lee Pits. Oh, yes. And we'll be able to share his vision about our building ministry. And we're committing already to bringing the, the whole television show to, to the new church. So that's, I'm the head guy, so it's, the decision has been made. So the, <laughs> the, uh, the uh, let's talk about uh, December 16th and 17th, Lovey. What can people expect? Okay, uh, December 16th, we're gonna have what we call a family fun day. That's where uh, on the site, we plan to have several activities that involve the community. Uh, because what we want to do is we're moving into another area of Dunbar. We want to let people know that we're coming to your area and we want to be good citizens and good neighbors there. On the 17th, we're having a uh, worship program where our bishop will be in attendance and he'll be bringing a religious service there. And, Outdoors under the tent. Uh, well, on the 17th, it will, it will begin well, on the 16th, let's say it this way, it will be outdoors, there will be a tent there, there will be staged activities throughout the campus grounds. On the 17th, we're going to have a worship service uh, at the church, and following that worship service, there will be a caravan that will move to the new sites, and then there will be a ceremony for uh, the bishop to uh, uh, basically uh, welcome in this new construction for this community. Excellent. The uh, Pastor Given, uh, two things. The the vision. I mean, you have to be a forward thinking. You have to have some forward thinking people to mm -hmm. visualize it and then bring it into reality. Uh, I wanted you to speak to that vision and how it how it first started. Give us a little genesis on the early days of it. Well, at my arrival, my knowledge. Um, 
always have stated to me uh, when I arrived December the 26th of 2010 that they wanted a new worship center. Uh, we had prayed about it and we had worked out uh, some of the things that we thought would be what would be best for the community. Uh, it didn't work. Uh, later, the pastor had a heavy heart about it, and of course, uh, being the type of person I am, I went to God about it. And uh, one morning, he directed me to 2160 Veronica Shoemaker. Uh, I was there, I said to myself, I said, are you sure this is where we want to build this building? And the Lord spoke to me, the Holy Spirit spoke to me and said, this is where the new church will be built. Uh, I, in turn, went back to my office, called Brother Wells, and said to him, I need you to meet me uh, at my office. He came. I drove him to the spot, and I said to him, this is where God is leading me to build the new worship center. And he said to me, I think this will work. We gathered the trustees later that evening. It was a rainy day. And Brother Frederick Mar Morgan Sr., who is now deceased, one of the senior, well, was the senior at the time of the trustee board. And he said to me, Pastor, this is the site. And then I knew there was confirmation that we would build on that site. We struggled, we sacrificed to pay the bill, uh, the mortgage within three years, really less than three years. And we are proud of our accomplishments. And so we are where we are today, uh, ready to start with the site work to be able to do the foundation, hopefully will be done by the time we have the groundbreaking on the 16th. See, one of the things about this television show is looking back, like what you just said, we'll be able to look back at this. This is documenting history right here in 2017. And to get that verbally from you, it just uh, will, will, will live for many, 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 many more years, mm -hmm. long after you and I are gone, right. uh, people will be able to hear this conversation. We got it. Uh, love you. Uh, one of the things uh, about our great community, Dunbar, is we get misconceptions about the community. The, the, the vast, the majority of the people in the Dunbar community, great people, we know we move around that media and other things can give a misconception. I want you to speak to the misconception. Well, one misconception is, is that our religious community is dead in some ways. Uh, and our religious community obviously is striving. There are a, many, the vast majority, 80, 90 percent of the people in the Dunbar community are good citizens. That's right. Mm -hmm. And as good citizens, they contribute. They, they want to have good things happen to their children. They want a good education. They want to uh, be able to uh, practice uh, their religious beliefs without uh, recrimination. And they want to see the community uh, progress and advance. Uh, we in Dunbar deserve new things too. Uh, as you say, we move around this county, mm -hmm. and if you do, you know that in this county, to one of the reasons we're one of the fastest growing counties in the nation is the fact that people are investing uh, new capital into this uh, particular area to, growing. In to right. increase and raise the quality of life. The same thing is hap should happen in Dunbar. It should happen at a much larger rate. And our church, I'd like to say, is on the cutting edge of trying to bring that into the Dunbar community to raise the quality of life for people and also to spread the good news. And the good news is that uh, Christ is still alive and that uh, there's a better life uh, for all of us. Let's give a phone number where people can call it for more information, if they want to make donations, the whole gamut. What's that, what's that phone number? Erico 239 three three two zero three zero five okay and of course the website has been appearing on the screen gentlemen it's been a pleasure getting you here of course we'll be getting you back in the future got to save a little bit of time for the sisters of zeta phi beta sorority and we just happen to have a man here of alpha phi alpha fraternity lovey wells who has on a blue pen <laughs> what, what's that blue pen signifying lovey Dillard university <laughs> <laughs> don't get it confused don't get it confused phi beta sigma in it's house. okay we're good <laughs> We're all, we all agree. All right. We're starting to uh, document this history already. As the saying goes on this particular show, for those who say it can't be done, they're usually interrupted by those like Pastor Givens, my good friend Lovey Wells, and all the fine people at Mount Olive AME who are doing it. We'll be right back with Jackie Williams. <laughs>